Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It's Gratitude Tuesday today on The Ted Show. It is October 22nd, 2019. I'm super honored and super excited to have our first Ted Show U.S. presidential candidate. I can't tell you how many people said, what is she running for? President, <laughs> president of what? Um, JJ Walcott is on the show today. Very thankful to have her here. So it usually takes a while, a few minutes because of our connection here. Right, right. Let us know you can hear us and see us, obviously. And if you don't get it, I don't know if you know this, but they can hide behind that live number. Yeah, I do know that, yeah. Yeah, so I have a lot of people that go, I loved your show. I'm like, you didn't show up on show. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, but I watched it. I'm incognito, Ted. I don't know why I'd have to be incognito on a live show. Uh, but I'm super, we tried to do this show right around the time the hurricane was supposed to hit. And then it just shut everything down and... I don't know, it was kind of insane. So, welcome to the show. I am sure we sound good. I have no doubt in my mind. Um, we both are in red today. Yeah. I did it for Patriotic, and then I realized as I was tagging you today that Red Shoes is part of, uh, that's your inst part of your Instagram yes. um, handle, name. Uh, so I lo absolutely love, love, love um, the whole red scenario. So, welcome to the show, enough of me talking. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And ironically, I will um, share with everyone since they don't see that you have on red shoes today. I too. have. Red, we both sure have, have red story. shoes. Yes, yeah. my I'm a big shoe person. I think guys can add something to their boringness by having <laughs> colorful shoes and no one jackets. Accuses you of being boring Nobody today. has ever <laughs> accused me. Ahmed, what's happening? How are you doing, buddy? Ahmed owns Makani out in uh, a new Egyptian restaurant. Oh, He's wonderful. awesome. Uh, he's also in real estate, good friend. Uh, Scotty Bud's on. Hey, Scotty, what's going on? Uh, so now we get the highs. So now people are, it's finally hitting, right? Um, all right, so I don't remember exactly how we connected, but when we did, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I can't believe somebody from Orlando is running for U.S. president. So I want to get the backstory, right? Sure. Uh, I'd really like to know more about you, and so would they. So again, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, so, well, I'll just jump in with a little bit of a story and tell you how I got here, which is uh, a little convoluted as it typically is, Always. and certainly atypical. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd already know who I am, right? Right. Um, but but sometimes you just got to jump in with both feet and see what happens. So, my story is similar in the in the sense that it started back in 2016. Um, but as often the case, it's our kids that teach us something, right? So my son comes home from civics class irate. And my son is pretty much never irate. He's just not an emotional kid, so it caught me off guard. And basically the punchline question was, Mom, how is it that these are the two most qualified individuals for the presidency uh, in, in our entire nation? And I said, well, Mitchell, how about instead of telling me what you dislike, Tell me what it is that you would want to see in a president. I mean, if you could right. pick somebody, what would right. they look like? Because that's what happens a lot. That's it. A lot of people have all of the reasons they don't like an individual. That's right. But then they don't have any idea of what they would really want to see in an individual. They don't focus on that. Wait, before you tell the rest of Mitchell's story, tell them where you're from and your, your beginnings. <laughs> you want me Nobody really knows. to go backwards? Well, I want people to know you're from here. <laughs> okay. and, and I want them to know that you are a PhD. You're Dr. J.J. Walcott. Like, these are important sure. things for them to understand. Sure, well... They, okay. they don't want to think, oh, God, this crazy lady just jumped in in 2016 no, and decided... No, no, she's got a background, people. Well, and that's what I was going to say, was it's my background that, that, ended, that ended up driving me towards this. So my background is that I have whole degrees in developmental and clinical psychology. So I like to say I know when things go really wrong and how to make them better. Nice. And um, it's interesting in this day and age, although I kind of joke, the country needs a psychologist at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would benefit from that. I think I'm a well, big believer in that. Huge yeah, we're word. kind of like in this divorce court situation, we are. right? It's where right? where every everything is going wrong and, and both sides are, are struggling. So for me, the, the ability, I come here from Orlando. I went to Oviedo High School. We were talking about it earlier. I'm a UCF and FSU grad, so Yay, I got go that UCF. in UCF. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go nice. And um, when 2016 hit, what we came up with was that we needed somebody who could speak in punchlines, but could also deep dive into wicked problems. And right. so I often joke, uh, I say, I introduce myself in government a lot of times. Hi, I'm JJ, I'm a Taurus. And I like long talks in front of a whiteboard. 
<laughs> You're a Taurus. <laughs> That's a pun. I get people actually really, I, people will tell me, oh, Ted, I'm going to guess you're a Libra. I'm like, how did you know that? Um, but it's, I think it's important that you are engaged. Like one of the things that I can tell immediately about you, and then I want to hear the rest of Mitchell's story, sure. <laughs> is that you want to listen and want to engage. Uh, when JJ got here, uh, she was meeting with um, one of my close cohorts and partners in crime, and they were having a wonderful discussion. I think people also it's, are too sensitive, so you can't ever discuss anything. Um, and then people go, oh my God, they're having a heated discussion. Uh, <laughs> but I think that your personality li um, lends itself to being open and listening to people. Right. All right, so you obviously listen to Mitchell. Then I listened to Mitchell. I did an experimental campaign in 16. We actually were eligible as an independent write-in in 13 states, which was wow. a fascinating experience. And um, I think I got the bug. It was so much fun to try and solve problems of that caliber. So I went into government. I was the director of innovation for an education and training program inside the Pentagon. I was a US delegate to NATO, Partnership for Peace, and helped run a global partnership. And in these roles, I did two things. One, uh, together with almost 100 colleagues around the country, we redesigned the US education system. That blueprint has just been released publicly, so wow. this does already exist. Yeah, it's That's very exciting. It's a big deal. It's, it's changing education from being a knowledge-based goal to improving social skills, emotional skills, um, physical capabilities, getting into project-based elements. Uh, I know I was talking to your colleague earlier about bringing businesses in and inspiring and exciting people, mentorship. I mean, right. this has to be a key part of education. What we did was create the uh, policy and backbone to be able to empower all the states to do that. So this is a huge project. That's a giant project because you're basically giant. completely, you're turning the boat 180. Yes, right. and we got the Pentagon to pay for it instead wow. of Department of Ed. And when defense says this must happen, it that's happens. when it starts. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And the second job that I had was as a human innovation fellow. And I went through all departments and agencies figuring out what's working in government, what's not. And I was asked, are you ready for this? to redesign the executive branch. And I said, um, what the heck is this? Like presidential boot camp? This is the strangest job I've ever heard of. And um, in fact, we were able to get that publicly released as well. So we have these huge programs that are all set up and blueprints that are ready to go. And I had a theory. If we can find brilliance inside the US government, which I will tell you, I found it all over the place. We just don't get to share it with the American people right. because we're not allowed to talk to the press. I bet I can find it around the country. So I quit my job. That's I a big it. deal. It's a big deal. So you, I mean, for you to make that decision, that's a yeah. leap. So that tells you that your commitment, your knowledge, Completely. and your insight, um, I love that because we talk on the show a lot about people taking a leap. That's a real leap. This right is a there. real leap into uh, who knows what would happen. Into right? the unknown, really. Yeah. Yeah, at first, um, you know, the reporters would talk to me and they'd say, so are you, are you crazy? And <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I made the mistake of one saying, well, if I was, I probably wouldn't know. <laughs> and that's what they quoted. Oh, of course I thought, that's what oh, they quoted. Of course that's what they quoted. But I'm a psychologist. <laughs> Mainstream so, right? media, come on. I know, I know. It was funny. They don't ask me that anymore. Now they say, <laughs> you know, I looked you up and you're completely legit. So, so why would you do this? To which I always say, that's terrible that you have to ask that question. If you think I have capability to do this job, wouldn't you want me to apply for it? Right. I mean, it's a job after all, right? I think people are afraid of public service. They should be. <laughs> Understood. People, and, that's, and, the, and the thing is, is that I think, but on the flip side, the people that jump in with no knowledge, with no background, that's also a fascinating journey for them. So I think people are like, oh my God, you had all of this. Why did you give it up? What is, what is the it. impetus for you giving that? up uh, because it is a it is a selfless move regardless because you are you are putting yourself in front of you're being scrutinized all the time you have to deal with reporters who ask crazy questions mm -hmm. uh, you have to deal with people who disagree with you and they don't even know you or what you stand for yeah um, and I've had enough uh, political candidates 
and current public servants on the show to know that it is a lonely road sometimes that you go through. It is, but I've worked military for a long time. Yeah. And so uh, what ended up really pushing me over the edge was talking with a colleague of mine who's a former Marine, and he was telling me a story of Fallujah. And there was a giant explosion, and he did what Marines do. He threw off all his gear and started running. And he said, JJ, you know, I, I got about halfway there and remembered, oh yeah, I'm on a civilian <laughs> <laughs> billet this time. And he said, do you know the difference between a civilian and a Marine? I said, no, sir, I don't know the difference. He said, Marines run toward fire and civilians run away. Right. If our men and women of the military can risk life, limb, and I now add mind, then Amen. shame on me to sit back with all the knowledge and experience that I have, which is a very unusual set of information, and be afraid to risk public ridicule. Right. I, it's okay if I don't make enough money. It's okay if I don't make it on a debate stage. It's okay if any of these things occur, but what's not acceptable in me is to sit home and say, you know, I know the answer to that, and I could be helpful, but that's a lot of work, and I'm not sure I'm willing to do it. Because no, I love that, because I think there are people who actually do that on a regular basis mm -hmm. and continue to change the channel, continue right. to hit the remote. And it's absolutely crazy to me, because I agree, but there's so much fear, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just of the unknown, it's of uh, ridicule, it's yeah. of scrutiny, it's of, well, what if they find out this about me? And so it's easier for them just to, to lay in the fact that, all right, I'm gonna feel bad about it instead of doing something about it. And that's what's so cool then about what I've been able to do, because by taking what I learned in government, which was, of course, a lot of people don't know, I'll give you a tidbit, there's 179 innovation programs inside government. Wow. Do you know of any of them? Nope, not one. <laughs> they are, I mean, I worked for a program in the sub-basement of the Roosevelt Building that looks like Google. It's fluorescent green. <laughs> we have uh, beanbag chairs and whiteboards everywhere. Uh, it's got a barn door on it, and it's hidden in this like sterile white block area, and it's this little oasis. These exist all over government, but we don't know anything about them. Right. So for all those individuals who say, well, I've got a great idea, but I have no idea how to get it to government, I know how to get it there. So when I left my job, I bought an RV and I started driving. This is crazy. Had you driven an RV before? No, <laughs> I didn't even know how to buy one. But you're, and share the rest of your story, because I love this. I think going out and touching, being in touch yeah. with the people, uh, all of us, it's so important. So you got into an RV. Yep and you're, you're driving around the country. Yeah, yeah, and so what I do is I do three things in each state. I talk with local people, just, you know, what's your issue, what's your idea, what do you think needs to happen, and you would be very surprised. People have great ideas. They really do. And if I hear one more consultant tell me Americans are too stupid to understand or too busy to care, I... <laughs> makes you crazy, right? It makes me crazy because I haven't found it. And I, I say that with some authority. As a psychologist, I know how to collect data, right. right? So I know what I'm looking for and asking people, and people do care, and they are informed, but they only have X number of choices. Correct. And so when you give them the opportunity to speak, they share great information. The second thing I do is I interview experts. So we identified key areas of concern, right? Environment, healthcare, education, et cetera, et cetera. And I interview experts in each of these areas. Wow, they have great ideas. My goodness. I mean, there is, there is a group in Savannah, Georgia that has eco-vacations. An eco-vacation is where you pay someone to let you come and help do research to help turtles survive. No and then way. the money, the, so, so basically you're paying the researcher to do his work for him or with him. And then they take the money and they share it with underprivileged um, individuals and minorities to come and learn to be research scientists that mentorship point that you're talking about again. Right. So they're moving money, they're not using federal dollars, and they're having a huge impact on the environment. Wow. Cool. That is, the, and that's the creativity. I think because we, mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of friends in mainstream media, but I'm not afraid to say this. Mainstream media, like it's numbing a lot of times to, to listen to it. And so people be, have become desensitized and they feel like, all right, well the right. mainstream media is telling me nothing good's going on in the world and it all sucks, so what's the point of me even having an idea? There's nothing creative out there, nobody's doing anything positive and I'm just gonna die. I swear <laughs> there are so many people that think like that. I'm They're so like, what's sad the to point? say that. Yeah, no. Uh, but that's why I loved talking 
talk to people who are out in there and, yeah. and that's part of like what we're doing with Ted's community. There are people in our community, talent in our local yes. communities that are being underutilized or not used at all and we're missing the boat. We are. And when we start charging taxpayer dollars more and more and more for that, we, we essentially are trying to solve problems with money, but yeah. what you really do is solve problems with people. Correct. Right. So what's been something, 42 states, is 42 that states I've been through so far, and we will um, continue to go until Thanksgiving when I'll arrive back here in Orlando. And so um, we have found, I, I've just found so much. I mean, I, I now have, have interviewed well over 100 individuals um, at the expert level and thousands at the local level. And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like the undercover boss, right? <laughs> um, and, and so, it's, so it's really interesting, but it, it's fun. I mean, one of the things that struck me was, I think Alaska's probably been my most interesting state because I had no idea how impacted they are by environmental changes at an accelerated rate, right? So they're having to actually move communities. Well, what that allows us across the rest of the country to understand is one, how much it costs to move communities. Right. Two, what are the variables that we see before they have to move that we could actually anticipate? And three, what else can we learn if we look at that essentially natural simulation? Right. You know, Orlando is the, I don't know if you know, we're the world's hub for modeling and simulation. And so as the, I was the Office of Secretary of Defense lead here in Orlando and worked with Team Orlando. And is that like Research Park and that It's area? Research Park, you're correct. And then all of the branches of military are represented wow. as well. And so we speak at the Pentagon. I was the conduit between the Pentagon and Orlando. And then across, um, uh, across the ocean as well. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. I was in Switzerland at, at a NATO meeting and the commanding officer came into the room and he said, who's the US delegate? And I raised my hand and he says, um, so I know there's a lot of people in your country. I thought, oh God. <laughs> he goes, but you know, we're really interested in the modeling and simulations that's happening there. And I thought, oh, oh okay, well, you know, this is my community. And uh, he says, um, do you, do you know a guy named Walt Yates? I said, oh my goodness, not only do I know Walt, I mentor his daughter. Oh, see? <laughs> so a one that. American, it turned out it's that. right in our own community. Brings it home, doesn't it? It does. How do you stay positive? Oh, very easy. There... Somebody mentioned your energy enthusiasm right there and then somebody above said something about your positivity. Because it is draining um, to constantly be doing it's invigorating and draining at the same time, right? So you're feeding these different buckets, if you will. So how do you stay positive? Is it the mission? Is it family? Is it whatever it is for you? How do you stay on top of it and continue to be positive? Well, there's a number of things that I do, but there's one that's, that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, eight years ago, I, I lost my third child. And um, sorry. I had to make sense of that, right? You have to understand when you lose a child, it, it necessarily changes the way you look at the world entirely. Sure. It, it separates you in some ways from the reality and the hustle and the bustle because things don't make sense anymore, right? Why is it that we're working so hard if, if our own children can't grow up in this world? And so for me, I had to define that. And the definition for me is that it doesn't matter how many days or weeks you spend on this earth. It matters how many people you inspire. And so on my bus, on the back of it, it says that I'm flying on angel's wings. And so I promised my daughter um, when she passed that I would do something that would breathe life into the world and that I would be fearless and go out and, and add in some capacity. And I, I didn't really know what that project would look like, sure. but I just kept my eyes open for it. And when this all started to come together in our country and I realized I'm in this unusual space. I understand people, I understand government, I understand international affairs, and I'm a scientist. Wow, I could design solutions. That's something I'm good at. Maybe that's what I need to be Such adding to the world. Such a perspective. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're talking about, like people have bits and pieces of it, but you have such a great, unique perspective and background to pretty much handle um, anything that comes your way uh, because I think that's what happens. People have this one little uh, gift and they want to utilize it. They don't know how to utilize it, but you have a multitude of gifts and talents and to bring that to the forefront, which is what we want. Don't we as, I feel like as American people, 
We just want someone who's got our best interests at heart, mm -hmm. um, understands what we're going through, not the rhetoric that is on right. mainstream media and the rhetoric that I don't care what party you're in, the parties throw at you. It's the individual human being who has been through it, who is a human that we have to remember at the very core of everything. These people are human beings that are risking things and being selfless in their endeavors. It's just so important to have somebody who wants to do that for the reasons that you want to do that. So that's my kudos to you. I think Thank that's uh, a beautiful thing. I wanna know, have you had any crazy interactions? What's, what's, what's a great story from your travels? And then I actually had somebody when I posted earlier in the week about you. Okay. They're like, Ted, how are you gonna handle all the Secret Service? <laughs> Can't make that up. And you know what's funny is I was like, God, is that a real thing? It I, is a real thing. I know. It, in fact, it's odd for me because I've always, I mean, look, I like to say, I've been working at the same level as the people you see on stage, but I work in the shadows, right. not in the spotlight, which is why you don't know my name, but that's not because of a qualification difference. That's because I don't have fundraising Correct. skills. And when you work for OSD, Office of the Secretary of Defense, you don't get, you're, not, you're about the warfighter. You're about the Americans, right. but you're not about the press. So it, it, it's a different change, but I always traveled with a handler, right? I always had a staff. And now <laughs> I, I have some staff and I have remote staff and virtual staff and people pick me up in each city and things like that. But you know, I'm used to having people protocols, right? right. Someone opens my door, That's someone moves true. in, right? I when I, I, I when His Excellency overseas in Hungary doesn't eat, I don't eat. You know, I'm I'm used right. to those kinds of rules. And now it's who are you? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, have you held elected office? Because that's, what I care about is can you fundraise? I actually have a, an ad that I ran, and someone caught me rolling my eyes. <laughs> and the photographer gets the picture, and I was like, that is, that's gold, we're gonna put that up there. And I put up there with the thing, I said, you want me to beg for money to perform on stage? You, you've got to be kidding yeah. me. There is a reason we don't ask the Secretary of Defense to raise money in order to get his job. And there's two reasons for it. Number one, because if you're busy raising money, you're not busy doing your job. So and number true. two, if you're having to buy your position, don't you think we all kind of wonder if you're corrupt? Well, we do, and I think that's the interesting <laughs> thing too. Like even on the local level, I've had so many um, candidates come on <laughs> And their biggest challenge isn't, they can go out and speak about the message, what they believe, what they want to bring to the people. Sure. But the, the problem is, is that in order to do that, in order to play in the same sandbox, yeah. you have to raise money. Right. And that is almost every candidate's least favorite thing about what they're doing. And so that's the part that kills me. Like the, the local fundraisers, I have candidates that go, Ted, I don't even want to throw this, but my people tell me I need to, and I can't come out of pocket anymore. It's a lot of money, but I believe in what I'm doing. Wouldn't it be lovely if it did? you didn't have to choose all the time with that? I think that's the interesting thing, because you're already doing so much sacrifice on your part. Uh, you're doing it because you have a love, a passion, your compassion, so. All right, so tell us what it's like in Orlando. When you come back, I'm fascinated by this. Do you get bombarded? Do you get news stations that want to talk to you? Or has no one, is, is, are, have people realized yet that you're a U.S. presidential candidate from Orlando? So some yes, some no, right? So one of the things that was really important to me, uh, this is kind of my science background, right? There are so many people running that there's no sense in adding to the noise. So unless I had something, you know, I, I left on this hypothesis that we had these great ideas around the country. Right. Well, I'm not actually sure what I was gonna find, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> and I wasn't sure, I mean, I really wasn't sure if people would talk to me either. Right. I mean, I, I am somebody you don't know, and I, they usually interview me before they'll allow me to interview them, because I've had some really top-notch interviews, right? I mean, Harvard's talking to me, MIT's talking to me. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I've had the head of, um, the, the uh, AZA, which is the uh, Zoo Association, um, who is the former head of Fish and Wildlife for, under the previous administration. Wow. There are folks that, they have reputations they have to protect, so right. talking to a, a candidate, even one that isn't well known, could cost them. So I just wasn't sure what I would find, and what I have found has been so great that we are just now making the turn where I say, okay, 
let's be fundraising at this point. Right. We have something tangible mm -hmm. that no one else can bring to the table and no one else knows. Um, so I actually was in Arizona this week doing some filming and I'm hoping my, um, my video is going to launch either late this week or early next week and it will be an update on what I have found across the country and it's exciting. It's such good news. That. That's There's what I want to ask nothing you. negative. What, have you, what, what do you want the people who are listening who will watch later, what do you want them to know about your 42 states, the things that you have done? something positive they can take because remember nobody's giving them positive most of no the time uh, so what are you seeing in your hands on remember she's gotten her hands dirty she's traveling <laughs> literally she's I'm on an RV <laughs> I see, right I mean so what I feel like people don't hear enough of the fact that there is good going on in our world so can you share any of that sure so I'll say the simple message the one that I want everyone to remember and that is this we have all the skills, capabilities, and communities we need around this country. All we need to do is have an architect that connects them. That's the punchline. The stories behind that are things like a gentleman in Oregon who has taken on homelessness. He said, you know, JJ, I started looking at the waste in our country and thought, what if we look at it from a different perspective? What if it's an asset? So he started looking at people who are marginalized in our communities, those that are coming out of incarceration, those who um, are in the addicted population, those who are homeless, and said, I'm going to give you a job. He now has 15 companies. They have storefronts wow. and they sell online. He moves them through housing, starting with pre-housing, which is wherever you are, this together, and they've built this community and they sell all waste products wow. of all kinds. $50 million a year. Wow. Yeah, he really did rethink. Really rethink. Yeah. And you know what I said at the end? Anybody from the federal government talking to you? No, ma'am. That is the kind of individual I want on a board in, in HUD. Correct. Right? That's the kind of person. And, and what people don't realize is that we have ways to get into government to provide that information and help change policy and it is not political, and it does not deal on one side or the other, it's focused on solutions. When you know how the system works inside government, and you know the conduit spaces, meaning the pathways to connect these great ideas, you can solve our problems without more money and without Congress. I say all the time, I love that. it does not take an act of Congress to fix our country, it just takes a lot of dedicated Americans to work together. And now, I've proven it. Right, I started with the hypothesis, right, right. but now I can literally, if you go on my website and you look at our events page, I've, I'm retitling it America's Whiteboard. It is great ideas all over the place, and it's exciting to see each idea. Right. It's, it, it's invigorating to connect them by education, healthcare, whatever, but it's compelling when you start looking at how, if we change education, we improve the wellness factor of the country. When people are feeling better, their, the economy goes up. When economy is better, defense is better funded. When defense is better funded, the environment is able to regenerate. That, that is a tight solution. I love that because I think that some of the powers that be, and I'm talking uh, lifelong politician kind of people. Right. I want to keep everything in a separate bucket. It's easier if they keep it separate. Uh, the, that would be too much power with the people if we brought it all together and we all were connected because yeah. uh, they don't want anybody to make that connection. And I, I absolutely agree with that. All right, so uh, we could I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> we're going to share all of JJ's contact information, how you can reach out to her, how you can get involved in her campaign. Do your research on her. It's all out there. Yeah. Um, she's obviously got a great spirit and um, is compassionate and passionate about what she is doing. And remember, so much of this is thankless and selfless. <laughs> um, and so remember that when you've got somebody who really wants to go out and help the American people, really wants to make an impact on our world, um, there's not always an ulterior motive. Involved. And I think that's unfortunately how American people think of anybody who's running for anything, any office. What's in it for them? All right, so uh, mentors, we talked about that. Yeah. I'm super excited to hear what you said, but we're really big on that. We have a shortage 
Um, I just did a presentation at Valencia. Trust me, there is a shortage of people who are mentoring anyone. It doesn't have to be our youth, but let's focus on our youth. Who mentored you? Can you give a shout out, a thank you, to somebody who mentored you along the way um, that maybe changed your life or at least made an impact? Sure, sure. So I was in college and I was that quintessential college student who said, I'm going to be a doctor. And so I started on the pre-med courses and, and for anyone who's ever done this, of course, they sit you in a room and they say, look to your right and they say, look to your left. And those people won't be there when you finish or it won't be you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so there I am in my first semester of chemistry and I said, I hate this. I mean, I hated it. And the reason I hated it was because I was learning to do experiments I already knew the answer to. I said, this is stupid. This is not an experiment. I'm right. learning to titrate something. Well, big deal. I can do that. So I actually walked out in the middle of the experiment and the teacher's like, where are you going? I said, I'm, I don't know, but I'm not staying here. Wow. And I left the third floor of the science building and proceeded to walk through every other floor until I found <laughs> something that interested me. And that's when I found my professor, Carrie Keating, and I sat down at, a, at her desk and said, are you busy? And she kind of looked at me like, um... Always. No, yeah, no, okay. Um, I said, tell me, tell me about what you do. Tell me, tell me what is the psychology department about? And she started to talk about solving problems and helping people and thinking outside the box and started telling me about the research and the experiments, which we did not know the answer to ahead of time. Right. And I, I was hooked. That. And so I started to study with her and um, I, I ended up having my own research lab right there at the university and of course then went on to graduate school and continued my research. Uh, bringing that story full circle, she was one of my interviews on my trip and it turns out, and if you Google her you'll find this, Carrie Keating is the, the nation's leading expert in nonverbal behavior for politicians. Wow. So How little funny. did I know. Full circle. Full circle that we had a wonderful discussion about what's really happening in politics today, why we should be concerned about the type of people that are drawn to it, and why it is that we need to okay. encourage and excite people who have other skills to come into this space. And um, yeah, I, I would awesome. have never been able to predict that, it's but it's very cool. Works. It is, it is. And I, and I will just give one more shout out to sure. Anyone who mentors, please take it on. It is incredibly important. So. It's something I love to do, and I love to do it particularly because you find that not only are you helping empower someone else, but you're learning from them. Oh and so God. regardless of age, it's necessary. So critical, guys. And what, what JJ just said is so true. I mean, you're doing it, you're helping someone out, but you know, it's also good for you. It's a wonderful thing to do. Um, and if you want to do it, you don't want to have the feel goods. Well, you're going to get them anyway, because when you mentor <laughs> someone, you feel re really good and you're actually making an impact right now, uh, especially college age, because that's what I, I did right. yesterday. Um, they don't have mentors. They're just, there's no mentorship. You never know when people are going to call in. Um, anyway, so thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you're you. a joy. JJ Walcott, I tagged. I literally page. a joy. Do you know that's my middle name? Oh, is that your name? <laughs> really? Nice. Like, literally. You've got to use that more often. <laughs> um, I love that. She is a joy. Reach out to her. Get, get involved. Get to know more. Don't listen to all of the negativity that's out there. And if you're sitting there in that armchair, like JJ said earlier, and you want to do something, you have a gift. Take the risk, take the chance, take the leap. That's what we want you to do. All right, you're a doll. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, you so much, all of us in red. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you back soon. Thanks for being on, JJ. Thank you. Mwah. We love Mwah. you guys. <laughs>